Today I'm going to be talking to you about vacuum casting. What is vacuum casting? Vacuum casting is a process of making parts that you would have out of plastic by using a polyurethane resin, a silicon tool, rubber, and making those parts in a vacuum chamber. So vacuum casting is the process of when you want to make parts in a prototype stage of your product development. It can be production if you are talking about low numbers, but I'll focus on the prototyping uh, part of it. So you've got uh, a product you're developing, you will have plastic injection moldy parts in the production run. Um, properties of the plastic ABS or clear or a rubber. So the PU resins mimic the plastics. They have various properties from clear to rubber to the hard plastics um, to a flexible plastic like a polypropylene. Well, we start with the creation of the SLA master. We need to start by making a master model. The master model is generally a 3D printed part using the SLA process. We will need to finish that part in our model shop by rubbing the raw SLA down to remove any build lines that we've got throughout the print process and then to apply a paint finish uh, to the surface of the part that will be replicated in the silicon tool which will then also be replicated in the polyurethane moulded part. Now this particular shoe on we've already applied a texture to the 3D model that has come out already printed so in this instance we didn't do any painting because the raw SLA was perfectly fine to give us the demonstration parts which I can show you in a bit. So once we've completed the SLA master we will set that up so we can encase it in the silicon rubber and that is done by suspending it in a box and having some vents that we will put on to the part and a feed so we can then feed in the polyurethane resin allow that to flow through the tool come out and then be cured off so once this is being suspended in the box and ready we then pour in the silicon rubber that then needs to cure off and go hard generally we'll do that overnight so we will pre prepare the tool in one day let the tool go hard overnight and then the next day we can split the tool and start casting. When the tool has been cast it is a solid block of rubber. We need to cut into that tool to get to the master model to then take that out and leave us with the tool ready for casting. The tool would be split in such a way that it has serrated edges so it's easy to put that back together ready for the next casting part, always going to be in the same place so the parts always come out the same. As you can see here we have the core and the cavity, the A surface and the B surface. In this instance the A surface is this side and you can tell that because it's got the textured surface on it. So when the tool's ready we put it back together and then that goes inside the vacuum casting chamber. It goes in the bottom half of the chamber we have a separation plate and then we have the top half of the chamber. In the top half of the chamber we will put in the polyurethane resins and that is an A and a B mix. And once they start mixing together you get an isothermic reaction to start the resin curing off and the heat is built up. In the time that the resins are mixing you're degassing the resin so you're removing any air from it and also you're vacuuming out the chamber. So when the right vacuum has been reached and the resin has been mixed, we then start pouring the resin into a funnel which leads down into the silicon tool. When the tool is starting to fill, obviously we need to introduce some air to force the rest of that resin through the tool. So the air is introduced in the top half of the chamber which will allow the resin to flow through freely because the air in the top half wants to get into the bottom half. When we see the resin coming out of the vent holes we know we've got a good fill and the resin has flowed all the way through the tool. Once that is complete we will take the tool out of the chamber and place it in an oven. The oven is set to around about 70 odd degrees and this will then cure off for up to about 40 minutes, 50 minutes. When 
the part has cured off enough in the tool. We will then separate the tool and remove the part that cured from it. The part will have on it uh, the vents which the resin ran through to get out of the tool. They will be cleaned off and then we will just remove any flash, tidy up the part and then that needs to be cured further just to sit and rest. Now polyurethane part won't reach full mechanical properties for seven days. So it's a good idea to let them, to let them rest um, until you use them in anger, so to speak. Sometimes we'll need to have a fixture to hold it in place, so that would just sit and rest. Or we'll just, if we've only done a few, we'll just sit them in the tool and let that just rest while we are gaining full mechanical properties. With the process, it's flexible um, in terms of we have lots of options we can do. As I said, we can do the surface texture, we can put a gloss paint on the master model, which will give us a gloss feel, a uh, slight spark or a matte effect. We can put in inserts into the tool and they'll be molded in. So if you want to do some mounting, so this we have a handle, so this would have had a screw mounting onto its device, we can mold those in. Here we have a child's learning knife and fork. Um, we uh, CNC machined the blade and the fork um, had them chrome plated, we laser etched as well to get the logo and then we cast them in to the polyurethane handles. We have a clear resin which can be pigmented and in fact this started out as clear we pigmented it to get the blue. Uh, we can put separate areas within the tool by uh, adjusting the master model according to give us different surface textures so here we have a clear gloss and then we had a, a frosted effect on the part here. We also have a overmold process where we can do a, a two shot, mimic a two shot injection molding, where we have a hard part and then a soft part uh, molded in. And we can also have very fine detail in the part. So we've got some rib features here and also some clip features here, uh, screw bosses, um, which will allow the part to go together. So this part started out as clear and we pigmented the resin yellow to give us the correct colour for the customer. We can generally get a pretty good colour match by using pigments that we have in-house and we'll do it by eye, given a swatch. Or if you have a particular colour that you need to achieve, then we'll send away to a pigment specialist that will provide us with the right amount of pigment to match the right resin that we'll be using for your product. Here we have another sample here, and this one here, you see we've got an undercut in the part, so it, with the, the tooling can cope with that. Another good feature of silicon moulding is you don't need to worry about draft angles or all thicknesses. Uh, because you don't have shrinkage on the material, um, you don't have to worry about that if you're early in your product development phase. It takes a lot of detail uh, to put in draft angles, worry about all thicknesses if your product's gonna evolve over a bit of time during the product development process. So it's a, a good feature there. So you don't have to worry about injection molding um, design at this point. So it's a good process if you want to get a number of parts for your product testing, customer evaluation, and you don't have the time or the budget for injection molding at low volume numbers. The benefits are so we can have a quick turnaround of parts. So normally you'll be looking at uh, producing a tool in four to five days, and then you'd be casting one to two sets per day thereafter. Um, so the tool life, generally around about 20 to 25 parts, depending what the material is. It can be low as five, um, or it could be up high as probably 100. So this shoehorn, very simple. This tool will probably easily do 100 parts before you see any degradation and change in the part geometry. Whereas this part here has a lot of fine feature details into it. You're probably looking at 15 to 20 parts out of the tool for that part. So that wraps it up. Um, if you have any questions on vacuum casting for your next project, do get in touch. Go to the website, find out more information there, drop a contact form and uh, we'd love to help you on the next project. Thank you very much.